Welcome to this Alan Talks Tech video. If you'd like additional information on my technology videos, please visit my wiki at alantesswiki.pbworks.com. With the help of this slide, I hope to be able to explain the rather complex signaling required to set up a voice over LTE call, more commonly known as VOLTE. On the left, we've got the UE, the cell phone, um, often referred to as the user equipment, which is going to connect via the E node B, which forms part of the radio access network, on into the Evolve Packet Core EPC, um, which in turn connects to the IMS core, the IP multimedia subsystem core. Initially, we're going to have to use the MME, the Mobility Management Entity, to authenticate our device prior to entry of the EPC. The MME is going to communicate to the home subscriber server, the HSS, which in turn communicates with the AAA server for authentication, authorization, and accounting purposes. Once we've authenticated the device, we can now set up the control signaling to create a default bearer on into the internet. The MME, the Mobility Management Entity, is going to select the appropriate serving gateway, SGW, to access the e -Node B. This in turn will connect via the Packet Data Network Gateway on onto the internet. In this example, I'm showing two PDNs or two Packet Data Network Gateways, but in reality, quite often, one Packet Data Network Gateway will be used for connection on into the internet and into the IMS core. Once the signaling has been established and the bearer has been set up, we can move on to the next stage of connectivity. Now the MME is going to set up the signaling required to set up a second bearer into the IMS core. We now have the second bearer established and we can now register our device within the IMS core. We do this by using a SIP registration request. SIP is a very important protocol. It's the session initiation protocol, and it's really the glue which holds the IMS core together. This is a very important signaling protocol, not only used for registration, but also used for placing calls within the network as well. At this point, we also have to interrogate the HSS a second time and the AAA server to verify who we are, whether we've paid our bills and the type of services that we have access to. In reality, the HSS and AAA server will be duplicated within the IMS core. For simplicity though, I've kept just one HSS and one AAA server on this diagram. We can now subscribe for presence within the network. This basically will notify our friends and colleagues that we're on the network and the type of device we have, which can be used for connectivity. It also works in reverse. If one of our friends or colleagues um, arrives onto the network, then we'll get a notification indicating again the type of device he has and that he's actually present on the network for communication. Once we see a friend arriving on the network, we may choose to go out and, for example, check with Facebook to see what he's been up to. Perhaps he's been on an interesting vacation. And this is going to trigger us to place a VOLTE call, voice over LTE call. To do this, we're going to send a SIP invite into the network. This will trigger the policy and charging rules function to set up the correct quality of service within the network with a QCI equal to one. This is the quality of service control index. Different types of services will have different QCI values. A QCI of one, for example, will indicate that the maximum amount of latency which will be tolerated for this type of service is 100 milliseconds. The PCRF, together with the MME, will then set up the signaling to establish yet a third bearer across the network for the VOLTE call. The third bearer is now established, in effect, between the two cell phones, and we can now communicate using UDP, the real-time protocol, and real-time control protocol. A dotted line is maintained between the cell phones and the IMS core, those core elements being the call session control functions. We need to maintain this connectivity so that when the call is cleared, we can actually record who made the call, who they called, 
the time the call was made and the time the call was cleared. This information will then be signaled up to the HSS, the home subscriber server, which will in turn relay this information onto the AAA server so that the correct call detail records can be maintained. Thank you for watching this Alan Talks Tech video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to get more information on my technology videos with additional material, you can visit my wiki at alantesswiki.pbworks.com. Once again, thanks for viewing.